To get the operation running, Tony sends youngest son Mike to set up the water supply. My dad wants to get some more sluice and done before the end here because he wants more gold. And since we can't go to the Indian, this is the only, one of the only other places we can go to at the moment. So I'm just making sure to get start getting stuff ready. Look at that. That thing is stuffed. That thing's full of dirt. I'm going to pull it up to see how much. You like breathing, right? So imagine if I were to shove your nose and your mouth just full of <laughs> Makes it hard to breathe. Well, the pump likes having water flow through it. So it's full of <laughs> It don't like that. <laughs> thing's broken. Whole thing's gonna have to get fixed. The screen that protects the water intake is plugged solid. I think the road's gonna have to fix that. But that's not all. I just dug out your thing and I try, uh, pulled out the uh, suction because it was chuck full of mud. Your hose is broken and the suction uh, screens. Just letting you know that you're gonna need, uh, if you want to get this thing started up today, it's gonna be a little bit of work before you get her going. Oh, you got chuck full, obviously. Oh, wow, yeah. Ah. Pretty much. So all we gotta do now is fix this suction and uh, put it back together and make a go out of it. So we may as well cut the off. So pretty much what you're gonna do is take your truck, come in with the Oscars, drive up there, back in here, throw the suction on it and bring it up the top. Okay. That's the only play. There'll be 10 trips up and down. Put yeah. the pressure washer on it, clean the out. Oh yeah. That's where you have the toys because if we're gonna get a couple more ounces, then this thing is gonna have to run, okay? <laughs> so you say it, but this is one thing that seems to be a dozen other ones. Okay, let's do it, guys. Firing up the Kiwi hasn't gone with it, let's be honest. So, slowly but steadily, we'll make it work. On Paradise Hill, the beets are fighting to get their second wash plant, the kiwi, up and running in the cursed hunker cut. So far, a plugged screen, broken intake hose, and sudden engine failure have stopped them from firing up the plant. We got a water truck. And I was too lazy to get a steam cleaner here. So I do it this way. Kevin makes up a new coupler to reattach the screen's cage to the hose. We got the new coupler on. That is perfect. Now we just got to get it back down to the kiwi plant, plug everything together. We can finally start sluicing down there. Down at the cursed hunker cut. You got this hose? Let's lay it. It's time to put it all back together again and pray it all works. One, two, three, six. Ruby, lift that thing up. Okay, walk ahead. Good. Perfect. Get ready to start sluicing, I suppose. This curse cut, oh, this curse cut has been nothing but problems. But now we're up and running, so <laughs> hopefully the curse cut can give us a little bit of a break. With the curse of the hunker cut lifted, 
Tony now has two wash plants sluicing gold-rich pay dirt at a combined 450 yards per hour, giving him a fighting chance of hitting his 4,500-ounce season goal. Hey guys. Hey guys. Aww. How are you guys? Oh. It's obviously getting cold out. Little girl's got warm blankets instead of just the muslins. You should toughen them up. That's what you got to no. have. On a sunny day that was slightly brisk, you're like, doesn't she have a hat? She's going to get cold. Like, yeah, <laughs> come on, man. You can't have it both ways. I would put it on a clothesline. I was a clothesline kit and see how I turned out. Well, we're all wondering about that toy still. <laughs> uh, how was it this week? We were in that New Zealand plant for a bit. So the trouble was running all week while all this other stuff went on? Yeah. That thing is nice and dependable, isn't it? Always was. I, I love dependable. Okay, who's gonna count? Not, Not me. Not me. Ah, fate is late. <laughs> I think we should do the kiwi first. Kiwi first, let's go. Tony is still 900 ounces short of his 4,500 ounce season goal. Let's put a in there, Kevin. Hey, there's some chunkies in there. Sounds like some big in there. 20, 30, 40. 60. 63.25. Not bad, huh? Nice little hole you found. That should all kind of help towards the total. OK, let's do Mike's trouble. 100. 150. 200. 260. 297.03. For a total of 360.28 ounces, worth almost $650,000, bringing their season total to 3,988 ounces, over 500 ounces shy. We're getting pretty close. I mean, that's quite a bit more than we've been getting. We're getting to the bottom of our cuts. Don't count it until... No, no. dry it, weigh it, and then we'll talk. Right? Somehow we'll get there to our totals, right? Oh, let's just keep going until we do. Currently, we're running pay from the bacon strip. Um, it's not the best pay that we've ever run. All we can do is just keep hammering as much pay through the plant as we can, as efficiently as we can. I mean, I want much, nothing more than to see my buddy succeed. Right now, while I'm away, my new wife is planning our wedding reception for when I get home, so. A nice fat gold bonus would go a long way to uh, having a pretty kick-ass shindig for our wedding. It's a team effort to find the gold that we do, but I just really want to help Rick get the 2,000 ounces. And I really want this to be his best season yet. After his redemption last season, Rick is going all in at Duncan Creek. We've got the ground here now to run without too much effort and uh, you know, we can focus the majority of our effort on this real deep ground because it's going to be an expensive process. But I'm going to sink everything I own uh, into getting down to that ground. And if I don't get anything back out of it, if I wouldn't say that my margins are tight, I would say that that's the end of me. I might as well go home and pack everything up. I you know, wouldn't be able to afford my house. Uh, and I'll never come up to you Yukon again. <laughs> Rick needs to bank at least 700 ounces of gold before he can take a risk on deeper, richer ground at Duncan Creek. Ah, uh, wait a minute. A hole has opened up between the plant and the pre-wash, letting gold-rich material flood out. It's not a big piece of steel, but it's a pretty important one. It's a worn out, fell off, went out that side of the plant. It's probably in the tailings pile somewhere. 
Well, we'll be shutting down until we fix that. All the dirt's just coming out of the pre-wash, and it's just falling between the pre-wash and the plant. Rick believes a steel plate has worked loose. I think it actually comes off a... Well, there's no obvious... You know what I mean? There's no obvious, like, breaks here. There's no... I mean, I know I, there's got to be a piece, connect, you know, that goes over. What the f is... Why, why can't I put together what this is supposed to look like? This thing, whole thing shifted back and down. Ah, oh, so it's got to be all... It's, it, there's no piece missing, just the whole pre-wash moved backwards. So shouldn't there be pins? Yeah. That's why we couldn't find anything up there, like any yeah. fresh breaks or anything. Yeah, we didn't, we're not missing a piece out of the pre-wash as the whole pre-wash moved back because the pins fell out and the whole thing fell backwards. You'd think that they'd be right here. It found its way back today, but those pins could have been gone for a week. Rick can't run the plant until he's replaced the missing nine-inch steel pins. Cruzy, can you come down to the plant, please? With no mechanic, it's down to hometown buddy Chris Cruzy to fix the plant. Uh, what's going on up there, guy? Yeah, the whole pre-wash fell back. You just need to make some pins, right? Yeah, I mean, there's no pins in sight. They could have been gone for weeks. Nothing's actually broken. We just have missing pieces, so we need to find some pins to put back in there and get it put back into place, so. But it is downtime, and we don't need that. I can't afford anything right now. With a breakdown like this, I mean, probably only be a few hours, but these things add up, man. And every single one of them is just making it harder and harder to hit 2,000 ounces. I uh, just got a piece of round stock for a new pin. We found another one that we can use that's from something else. Luckily, I have the welding experience because nobody else uh, seems to be very well versed in welding. Don't call it a lifting eye for no reason. Cruzy will weld the eye to the pre-wash so Rick can reposition it with the excavator and move it back within touching distance of the shaker deck. Cruzy, I count on him. He takes care of uh, the machine, he takes care of the plant. He's kind of turned into a bit of a utility guy for me, and that's, that's really nice. I couldn't be happier with all that working out. Hey, guide me and make sure I'm lifting her straight. This machine lifted up, and this is the only wash plant we've got running right now. And it needs to be running again by the end of the day, so I can't this up. That'll make it a big repair, so got to be very careful here. Start going up, and I'll see what happens. OK. Come towards me. Uh, swing over that way a little bit. All right, now come, keep coming towards me. All right, now come down. Hold it right there. And just like that, pins are in. Well, as far as uh, breakdowns go, that wasn't too bad. Nice work. Thanks, pal. You know, we can never afford to have the plant down. Luckily, this time was a pretty easy fix. We got it going quick, but there's not a whole lot of time left on that plant before some serious rebuilding. Yeah, rough week, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm glad. I, I still have a good attitude about it, too, but it's uh, that sucked, man. Rocky's been so, like, rock solid for us for the last couple years, and we've abused it, and it's, it's showing. <laughs> I think it was down more than it ran this week. We can't afford too many weeks like this. <sighs> Not if we want to hit 2,000, eh? Here's the thing. It's going to get to the point where it's going to we're going to have to address it and do a major overhaul. We all know what it needs, but we all know that we can't afford to really shut it down right now. So what, what do you do, right? All I have to say is a bummer of a week, but there is some gold. Should we yeah. weigh it up? Yes, sir. I didn't sir, even sir. try to hide it from you guys this, this week. Yeah, <laughs> yeah thanks. Uh, all right. We got uh, 10. To reach his 2,000 ounce target every week, Rick needs 105 ounces. Get it 40. Get out of there. 40.64. 
worth $73,000. It's half of what we did last week. The plant ran half the, the amount of time, right? So the math does, it does add up. Even if it was what it was last week, we're still in the same boat. Yeah. It's not getting us to 2,000 ounces. So. You uh, got an eye on some other ground? I know there's ground here, but I'm taking my time, but we're going to have to pull the trigger on something soon. Perfect. Thanks again, guys. <laughs> Good, you ready? <laughs> got it. Ready. Well, it was a tough week, but, uh, you know, the team pulled through. We're not getting the gold numbers that we need, but, you know, without these guys, it could have been a hell of a lot worse, so. Freddie and Juan are two days into an overhaul of the Clayton Brothers' homemade wash plant. It's a bigger gap than I thought. Br Brandon, uh, Brand, damn it, I keep calling you. Me, eh? Yeah. Are we uh, friends or are we not friends? Friends, right? yeah. <laughs> The V chute's built. We're going to back Juan's truck up over by the plant, and then I'll back up the V chute, take it in, and we'll start getting it in place. Are we clear on your side? Yeah, we're good, yeah. Don't f my safe up, Juan. No, I won't this time, Freddy. <laughs> The truth is, if this trommel isn't running, they're not catching gold in the sluice. If they're not catching gold in the sluice, they're not making money. So we got to get this done as quick as possible, get them back up and running. OK, watch yourself. We're going to get this put in and uh, weld it up. Words can't really describe how cool it is working with the great guys that I'm here with and learning more from talking to them and just being around them. Little to no time. We'll be, we'll be flying through dirt, getting gold, and everyone will be happier than hell. We're hoping to do 500 ounces this season, and uh, that's a big number in gold. Perfect. Well, let's hold it in there. What do you think? You betcha. It's a good thing I'm so petite. A little more. Perfect. It's not the tightest spot I've ever been in, but it's tight. Looking sexy. Huh? Looking sexy. Way sexier, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like a piece of meat at times. <laughs> a sexy piece of meat, though. <laughs> huh? Next up, the new riffles. We still have a lot of work to do in our sluice box. There's some worrying going on. We're not making any money right now. Bills don't go on pause, so definitely worrying about it for sure. So these are uh, kind of like a Hungarian riffle. We uh, spaced them out a bit more, made them a bit longer. I think they'll be very efficient, very easy to clean, and just, uh, It'll help paint our boxes yellow. Nope, oh, go this way. Here you go. So we got our nugget riffles up top that are going to catch most of your gold, but they're going to let a lot of that fine stuff go by. So these guys, these lighter riffles, these are good at catching that fine gold. You got a different height to it. So we're going to put one section, just one in across here. OK. There you go. Quick and easy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's run her for eight hours and see what it does. Yeah, and let's get this dirt devil fired up, huh? Let's do yeah, it. let's do, do it. it. Fire up the pump, man. I'm going. how much better that water is. We don't have those rooster tails anymore. The next eight hours, 
will prove whether Freddy and Juan's fixes have worked and reveal if the Claytons are on track for a record season. Yeah, I'm stoked right now, man. The first couple buckets are going through the trauma. We're gonna head over to the box and see what it looks like, but it's looking good so far. Perfect, Wano! I can feel it, it's perfect. Well, look how even the boxes are running, guys. Yeah, very nice. I mean, it's pretty even all the way across. Well, let's keep running it. Okay. All right. Well, I tell you what, it's been a long few days, and Juan and myself are both flat tired, but at the same time, watching that thing run, it's running even, it's running good, the riffles look great, so we'll find out because the scale doesn't lie. At California Creek, Brandon and Brady are eager to see if Freddie and Juan's fixes will improve their gold take. Shut her down. That ought to be enough. Well, shoot, guys. Let's glance in the sluices, huh? OK. Holy all down through here. So these are working, you see right. the change, right? Yes, so it caught most of it at the first part of the change. Right. You seeing gold over there too? Yeah, you betcha. Right through here, even in this one. Every box has gold now. Oh, well, that's yummy. That looks good, huh? That's yummy. <laughs> Delicious, huh? Are we eating good tonight or steak? Well, yeah, or we're what? eating steak tonight, but he's buying. Me again? Again? <laughs> I can't really wipe a smile off my face right now. Wano. Bueno. Good job. Well, like Juan and myself always say, you see it in the box, but the scale doesn't lie, right? Let's clean it up. See what we got? Yep. Yeah. Microwave there, Juan. Let me get it going, Freddy. The first test run produced just 4.1 ounces of gold. Well, you guys do the honors, weigh your gold. Brady, give her a go, I'll tell you, Brady. All right. Come on, Brady, pour it just right. Come on. Two, three, four. Just past the old one. Five. There you go. Six. 6.73. 6.73 ounces. Nice. Great right on. That's awesome. good, guys. That's very that's good. Awesome. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. That's almost an ounce an hour. That's $12,000 worth of gold for an eight hour run. The weather's closing in on us here. It's been snowing a little bit. It's been cold. You know, it's that end of season push. And everybody's doing a really good job. With just days left in his season, 27-year-old Parker Schnabel has mined over 7,000 ounces of gold worth $12.8 million. The best thing we can do is, you know, put as much gold in the box right now as possible make as much money as we can so that we can afford a second operation next year. To beat his previous record, Parker needs to pull in over 350 ounces of gold before the brutal Yukon winter freezes them out. It's a really good team right now, and I've tried hard to give everybody as much autonomy as I can, and it works great. Parker's leaned heavily on plant boss Tyson Lee and superstar mechanic and foreman, Mitch Blaschke, Here we go. who's running point on Mud Mountain. You know, we definitely spent more money than we did last year. I know that. Um, those big dozers ripping all that mud this year was, was very expensive. So far, he's dropped $5.4 million getting to the bottom of Mud Mountain, and he still hasn't broken even. But he's finally on a hot pay streak 
if there's enough of it, he could still win big. You know, the piece that's left, though, is where the best drilling was, so there's still hope. Good morning. What's up, boss man? Now, Mitch and operator Damian Brown are ready to pull the last section of gold-rich pay dirt. All we got to do is get the last of this pay out of this road. We'll pull the dewatering pump as soon as this last pay is to Big Red. Mud Mountain cut's done. Sweet. We've been waiting a long time to say that. Been waiting all season to say that, so us. Sluicefer should be finishing up this week as well down at Ken's. We'll get the trucks down here. Hopefully it's got a lot of gold in it. Sweet. Have a good one. Thank you, Damien. Ever since I got here this season, Parker told me about this project he wanted to take on, and it's been a huge one. You look at the equipment, it's tore up. You look at the manpower we've invested into this, and you know it's just a matter of, is there enough gold in here to make it all worthwhile? Ready to pull this pump? Ready for Let's it. Let's do it. This dirt is where the best drilling was. Now, what we're shooting for here is a total of the season of over 7,500. We want to beat what we did last year. That's a lot of gold to get out of this ground up here in one season. We've been running Big Red at a nice pace here to make all this happen, but right now, it's the last lap. We're gonna crank this baby up. Oh yeah, that'll do it. If we got any chance of getting this dirt through there, this is it. You know, this time of year, the snow can start flying at any minute, and that's why it's so important to get Mud Mountain done here. Obviously, we had a big stockpile of pay dirt here at one point, and now we've got, you know, hardly anything left. Just got to try and get it through the wash plant before everything freezes up here. 24 weeks ago, Parker staked his season on Mud Mountain. He's dug 60 feet down to the deepest and hopefully the best pay he's ever mined. So this is the last few loads here in Mud Mountain. Now, operator Damian Brown is digging out the last of the cut in the hopes that it delivers their biggest gold way ever. So it froze quite hard last night. We came out this morning to find all the water is all frozen over, so it's a good job we're getting close to the end. I'm really hoping that these goody holes here are going to really pay off for us. I think this is actually it. Nothing, Mitch. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, man, I think we're done down here. No way, man. That's the last of it, huh? We've been waiting a long time to say that. All right, awesome. Well, let's uh, just see if we can get this stuff through a wash plant now. Better crank it up. Yeah, buddy. It has been a long season here at Mub Mountain. I actually can't believe that that was the last scoop out of it. I just hope there's a bucket full of gold. Last bucket of Mud Mountain. We've been at it since boots got on the ground this season. Hasn't been what we thought it was going to be. Finally, we can call it an end after this. That's it, buddy. Last one right there. It's about time. I never thought this nightmare was going to end. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about. This is such a good feeling. You think about that stockpile we had here when we started. Mud Mountain has been reduced to one hopper of pay dirt. We conquered her. Yeah, nice job, man. Let's shut this thing off, man. Woo! Yeah! Right now, we're shutting off Big Red and Mud Mountain for the last time. It's a good feeling. We won't know until Chris does the final cleanup here for us. We see just how much gold we were able to get out of this. What's happening? I want to let you guys know where we're at with everything. Hours after the sluices stop, Parker has some bad news for his crew. We're going to come up short on the gold front on a season where we've got a huge amount of bills. So what do you want to do to try and fix the problem? 
I think that we should try to get something else opened up. Still shy of last year's 7,500 ounce total, Parker wants to push for another quick score before winter hits. When we finished up at the airstrip in zone three, you know, we did that addition there where the road was, and that was all thawed underneath there. That was good ground too when you tore up that road, Mitch. That shows, that shows some real potential there. Earlier in the season. Hey man, I got the first scoop of the airstrip road extension piled up here if you want to start sending it through that wash plant. Mitch mined out ground under a road at the airstrip. 20, keep her going. 281.55. And his gamble paid off. I'll get down to that section of road right along the river there, move a wash plant down there. So we'll start getting things in place for the reclamation and your crew can start doing that kind of stuff, right? Yep, for sure. Okay. I think I'll go back to cleaning gold. It's a lot easier. the water line but the whole system will everything come off oh, oh. you can see here the dozer snagged this, ripped the pipeline right in half. When this pulled, it ripped everything from the wash plant loose. Not only did the pipeline get ripped in half out there, it broke the whole manifold off the wash plant. This is what supplies water to the plant up to the pre-wash, has our bypass. This is about as bad as it could be right now. Well, it uh, ripped this pipe clean off. She gone. The pipeline from the pump is connected to the plant with a 90 degree manifold. The 90 degree manifold that attaches the bypass and the water supply to the wash plant is broken. So Mitch will have to remove the bypass that regulates the flow of water, strip the hoses from the manifold, and reconnect them straight to the plant. This down and dirty fix could lead to excess water pressure and flush gold right out the sluice runs. This isn't ideal, but this is the end of the season and our wash plant just got mangled, so we gotta do whatever we can to make it work. After cutting out the ripped section. There you go, that's what we need right there. Right there. They fuse the pipe back together. Pull that back to there. It's like magic, it's all back together again. Next. Mitch brings in flexible hose to make the bend from the water supply to the wash plant. We're gonna have to have a piece of eight inch lay flat to get us from here straight down and over to our water line. Without a bypass, Mitch is relying on the pump to maintain the right water pressure. There it is. There she comes. After four hours, costing them $30,000 in lost gold, they're finally back to sluicing. I saw what happened at Big Red with the pipeline. 
You know, I know Nona's kicking herself pretty good, but we all make mistakes. I know I've done it before. Almost that exact thing. At Mud Mountain, Parker is in a race to extract every ounce of gold through Big Red before winter shuts him down. But right now, he stepped into his D11 dozer to deal with a more pressing issue. You know, it's a tough balancing act because we're behind on gold and we want to get gold out of the ground, but if we don't do reclamation, we're just screwing our future because we won't have a future. It's the plat, the plat! Holy Get a shot off, get a shot off. Kill the water. Oh, we gotta shut the pump off. The plant is solid with dirt. Oh, wow. We probably got two feet of material in that thing. Water and pay dirt are funneled through the distribution box, which distributes the mixture evenly across four sluice runs. In an effort to up their production, Justin has overloaded the plant, blocking the distribution box, backing up Big Red. We're gonna have to shovel all that out. That's why all this water's bailing out the end. There's sacrifice right there. What a good boy. Should I just give you in the rain gear and we can just turn the water on? Yeah, that would be the best. <laughs> At least it's not like fertilizer and you're standing in poop. You're such a glass half full kind of guy. That's what I love about you. <laughs> just try and get the hole opened up there. Could be worse. Could be yeah. a heck of a lot better, too. But I think we'll throw a little bit more water at it here and let's get this thing flowing. It doesn't look to be pouring out any of our joints. Oh, yeah, there we yeah. go. Nice job. With the season nearly over, Parker's closing in on last year's total of 7,504 ounces. To stay on track, Parker needs his wash plants to bring in 420 ounces of gold per week. Here we go, 10, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 115.4. So it's ugly and bad. Parker has invested over $5 million in Mud Mountain. He still needs 900 ounces before the cut will start to make a profit. Keep her coming, 50. 100, 150, 200, 250, keep going, 300, 320, 340, 368.45. What's up? And since it's not gonna be the end of the river this year, we have to find some stuff to do because we have invested what give or take five million dollars. Tell me about it. We got 40 people hired. So we got to do something. After losing half his operation on Indian River, King of the Klondike Tony Beats is struggling to pick up the pieces. His only source of revenue is Mike's Trommel running on Paradise Hill. But it's not enough. He needs another plant running now and knows there's only one option. So better get the troops in. How are you going? Yo, what's up? So here we are. Five million dollars spent. Hi. One thing is for certain, 
We are not going to lay down, of course. We have a little piece of hunker that we could go to and take some payout and finish off. The hunker cut is always problem, problem, problem. We cannot just stop or slow down. You got to keep on going. Tony Beats is struggling to save his Caesar. Son Mike is running 200 yards an hour through his trommel on top of Paradise Hill. And down in the valley, Tony has put Kevin in charge of defeating the cursed hunker cut. Looks pretty good. That looks workable. The Kiwi wash plant has been idle over the winter in thick snow and temperatures down to minus 40. To get it running and keep it running, whatever the cut throws at him, Kevin must overhaul it. We've had a few problems with the Kiwi plant last year. We'll make it work somehow. I think a solid day here and we'd have everything pretty much done. Okay, this board needs to get put back so we don't have these giant off rocks falling on people. Beautiful. Pass up that plate. There we go. Beautiful. We need to adjust the chain. That's perfect. Sexy. Cool. Yeah. Everything is attached and everything is put on. She should turn. Fire up. Get ready. Fingers crossed. Damn, the curse cut. There we go. Now we're pumping. Hey, Brandon, throw another bucket in the thing. First bucket of the this season for this plant. I don't know if you running, that'd be good. Yeah. Whoa! Holy Shut the thing off. Shut the thing off. What the Anyway, what the f happened, Kevin? No, no. Uh. Holy. 134. She overheated on us. What the? Holy. That engine is. That's gonna be a. So what do you think you're looking at? I'm gonna probably need a set of heads and probably some thermostats as well. A failed thermostat has caused the engine to overheat, warping the cylinder heads. So we'll be down for another two, three weeks. Down we are. We're so close, but of course, the curse lives. I thought this hunker cut may be a nice, quick, easy little cut, but right now it looks like we're dead in the water. That is depressing. Hey, girls. Hi, Papa. Hey, guys. Hola. Hello, brother. 
Hello, sister. Mm -hmm. At Paradise Hill, guest of honor, the latest addition to the Beats dynasty, oh, Tony's granddaughter, Jasmine, joins the weekly Goldway. So, I heard you guys went down to hunker. How'd that go? How do you think? <laughs> kind of a week. I mean, we put lots of effort into that plan to get it going. And called the show for it. Ruby and I didn't call that the cursed cut for and giggles. Very funny. Come on, but the next bright idea, I suppose. Uh, how did your plan do this week? Oh, uh, pretty good. Ran all week. Good enough. Let's so see let's what, what we have. This season, Tony's averaged 172 ounces. 20, 20, 30, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 150, 173.32. Over $300,000, but way below the pace he needs to hit his goal. That 9,000, I don't think we're going to get even close. So let's try for 4,500, and even at that, I'll be pretty happy. Because remember, no in your river, it'll be, it'll be a tough one. So let's get out there. Sounds like a plan. Gentlemen. Thanks, guys. See you later. We had a really good season last year, and I don't know that we're going to be able to match that. The big challenge now isn't in mining. It's in staying ahead of the operation. In the Yukon, 26-year-old Parker Schnabel is seven weeks into the mining season. Right now, we're going to stop stripping at Mud Mountain. We've got half of the cut down to gravel, but it's just taking a lot of time, and it's we're spending a lot of money, and we need to start getting some revenue in. So far, Parker spent almost two and a half million dollars at Mud Mountain, trying to get down to gold. To keep funding the ambitious dig, he's looking for a quick score. Mud Mountain's definitely some of the deepest ground we've mined. So we're going to jump to some shallower ground down at Kenan Stewart's and start stripping down there. Four miles west of Mud Mountain, the promised land, leased from Ken Tatlow and Stuart Schmidt, covers 2,000 acres. Last season, Parker prepared a 20-acre section, leaving just two feet of worthless overburden to remove. So it's not going to take us much time once we get it all stripped to sluice it out. You guys all know what needs to get done, 100%. And you're better at it than I am. So, Fergie, let's get you stripping down here right away. Yep. We need this place stripped in a week. So let's just focus on that. And um, I will say everybody's, like, everybody here is doing a great job right now. All right, thanks, guys. New hire, former Marine Robert Froggy Jordanet oversees stripping the ground to pay dirt. Parker wants to have this ground ready to be sluiced, and there's a lot of work to be done. Time is against us. We really need to step it up to make it all happen. It always seems like there's never enough people to do the job because there's so much work to do. So I'm happy to do whatever I can. 82-year-old claim owner Ken Tatlow runs the massive D10 dozer to get to the gold on his own ground. We've had this ground a long time. It's cost a lot of money to hold it. And so it's good to start to see some royalties come in. Froggy must move 77,000 yards of worthless dirt before the promised land is ready to sluice. I got two trucks, and now I'm my 100 loads per truck per day. And that's a bare minimum. And they know that. They want to be miners, they got to perform. That's bottom line. 18-year-old Evan Kurtz 
never drove a rock truck before last month. Oh, I like working with Froggy. He's really strict with it, though. If you don't hold to his standards, then you're going to get a talking to. 22-year-old Jordan Tatlow is grandson of landowner Ken, but this is his first season mining. We're trying to move all this dirt out of here. There's a ton of dirt about, oh, just a second, about to hit someone. So there's only a couple of us down here. Parker wants this thing sluicing, so a lot of dirt to move and not a lot of time to move it. You could be out of the military, but you can't take the military out of the guy. And if you're going to do a job, you're going to do it to the best of your capabilities. Jordan, I got a hundred loads to hit. Come on. So we're at 75 loads. I need 25 more loads out of you today. Okay. It's a half mile round trip to the waste site. They have to do a trip every seven minutes nonstop throughout their 12 hour shift. I'm really happy with the way it looks. Like. I can't imagine that a sluicing crew is going to have a problem with any of this. Ken is definitely like the coolest landlord of all time. Landowners that understand the process and when we need help, they come help us out. It doesn't get much better than that. That's the best man I've seen for a hell of a long time. Yeah. That's good. Good. That's damn good. Hey, young fella, what hey, are you old doing timer. there? How's it going? Just gonna show Jordan what he's doing this for. Hey, Tyson. How's it going, man? Good. How you doing? Oh, pretty good. Huh? Yeah, want some? No, thanks. Hey, Mitchell. What's happening? Crazy, huh? Man, what a week. At Scribner Creek, landlord Ken Tatlow has brought grandson Jordan to his first ever gold way. Well, we had quite the week. And the rest of the crew are here to find out how much money they banked from Slucifer in the airstrip cut. So Sluice first, still running the airstrip, and then everything motoring down at Ken's, and it's pretty much ready for a wash plant. I think the sooner we can get Sluice for down and running on Ken's ground, the better off we'll be. You want to see what we got? Yeah. Yeah. Parker can't move Slucifer onto the promised land until he's hit 1,500 ounces in the airstrip. He still needs. 500 ounces. You want to read it out, Mitch? Ready? All right, Chris, let's see what you got. OK. 20, 50, 80, 100, 120, 150. Keep going. 160. Still more in here. How much you got? 200. What do you think? It just keeps coming. Yeah, it does. It doesn't stop. 240. Can you hit 250? Yeah, 250, 260, 270. 288.9. Worth $520,000 and over halfway to the 500 ounces he needs. Good yeah. Week. yeah. That is a really good week. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot. So, this is what you're working for. That's it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, with that, that's going to give us 1,321 ounces. It's a lot of money. Pretty good, man. We're still in September here, you know. Close to the end, we got snow overnight. And it's just not looking like it wants to give up. In the mountains above Kino, winter has fired its first warning shot. It's a pretty sad sight. This wash plant should be cranking out gold this time of year, and instead it's sitting there covered in snow. Last week, 
Rick's second wash plant, Rocky, helped him to his best ever gold way. We can thaw the runs, you know, get the water moving. As soon as you stop, this happens again, it freezes, and you start the process over again, and pretty soon it takes longer and longer. It's not worth your time. Yesterday was the last time Rocky ran for the year. We're gonna have to focus all of our efforts on Monster Red. You know, when I decided to go out on my own and uh, go gold mining for myself, um, that was a big risk. You know, and there was some people that, you know, they didn't think I'd make it through my first season. But, you know, I'm still here. You know, they were wrong. Now, in his third season away from the Klondike, Rick Ness has finally found Kino's big gold and dropped a quarter million dollar deposit to buy his claims outright. But with the end of his mining season looming, Rick still needs 550 ounces to hit his 2,000 ounce target. Rick, you got a copy? Yeah, go for Rick. Hey buddy, you mind coming down and taking a look at this water I'm dealing with? All right, I'll be right down. Okay, buddy, thanks. There's a lot of water in here, huh? Yeah, so, I don't know, like, is it worth me even smoothing this no. out right now or just no. wait till it's dried no, up? No, no, it's it? not. No, we're gonna need to get a pump in here right away if we're gonna get this payout. After digging for 10 weeks, Rick's crew are 170 feet down in the Rally Valley. Unbelievable. This is lame. At Rally Valley, the high grade pay Rick is relying on to save his season is still under six feet of water. You know, uh, we're finally down to the good pay. Rick got us a pump, told us that this cut was gonna be bone drying. Got here in the morning, flooded right out again. And uh, you know, we're just one step ahead, 10 steps behind, and it's getting really frustrating. Rick's six inch pump is no match for the 6,000 gallons of groundwater bleeding into the cut every minute. The water didn't really move. Yeah. <sighs> you know, that six inch just could not keep up for how much volume of water we have here. And it's a pile of and barely works. The tailors have, the tailors have 10 inch. Do they? Sitting up there. Oh, really? Yeah, from what I remember. There's nothing wrong with it. It just hasn't run in a couple years, yeah. so. All that's left is to plumb up the hoses. Dude, we kind, of, we kind of need to spin this a bit more. I think that we should leave it right there. Yeah. If everything reaches. I say drop it down, we'll unhook this for now. Is there a loop on the side there or something to hook to? <laughs> what the f are you doing? What? This is like watching grass grow. Hey, nobody's amused by your bull <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Nice catch. It's snowing right now. I don't know how much time we have left, but I do know that the time we do have left needs, needs to be spent running this good pay. And the only thing standing in our way right now is this water. We got this 10 inch in here. Hopefully it's got the jam we need to get this thing uh, dried out. I think she's on there. Fire it up! <laughs> Whoa! -ho! Yeah, boy! I love the sound of those old cats. Powered by a massive 465 horsepower dozer engine. Yeah! This 10-inch pump can empty an Olympic swimming pool in just 70 minutes. You can see the water moving from all the way over there already. See that? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you can already see it. Well, this pump, man, it should work. And if it does, we'll be able to come in here in the morning and finally start getting this good pay out of here, you know? All we've been worried about for the last couple days is water. And uh, we need to be worried about the gold, so. Fingers crossed, morning comes, gold's coming out of here. Just the people I wanted to see. Where's she going, Ricky? Not too bad. 
Oh, that's heavy. You think it's heavier than last week? It feels like it. Oh, boy. Ricks lost two days sluicing while he battled a flooded cut. With the big freeze threatening to shut him down, he needs the Rally Valley to deliver. You know, we had a few setbacks this week. Nice. If there wasn't so much damn water down there, um, you know, if that six inch pump would have been able to handle it, we would have been a little farther ahead than we are. But in that 10 inch pump, like that certainly got the power to do it. Yeah. But uh, unfortunately, that came with a price tag. I talked to Troy, and it turns out they didn't have a problem with it as long as I bought it. Ooh. <laughs> uh, yeah, 40 grand for a pump. Ouch. We needed it, so at least it was right on site. Yep, and it kept us going, and uh, it's keeping our cut dry. Yep. It's the price you pay, I guess, yeah. you know. But yeah. uh, And by the weight of this, I think it's starting to pay off. I love that. I know. Good stuff. So let's weigh it up. This jar's already got 100 ounces in it. Woohoo! I can't wait. All right, here we go. To hit his 2,000 ounce season goal, Rick still needs a massive 550 ounces. So we got 10, 20, 30, 50, 70, 80, 90, and yeah, over 100. No way. Wow. 106.9. Oh my. <laughs> nice. So 106 plus 100, that's 206. Worth $370,000. Yeah, <laughs> wow. That's awesome. <laughs> that's amazing. Rick is 300 ounces shy of his season goal. If he can keep Monster Red running, he still has a shot at victory. <laughs> <laughs> Even though we were down for days, the team pulled it off. This is great. I mean, 206 ounces. Man, it's awesome. If we just keep going deeper in that, it's just going to get better. That's the next challenge, right? Yeah. Lots of ripping, lots of dirt moving. In the eight acre nugget cut, son Mike digs pay. So much dirt. Lots of nuggets, lots of nuggets. Beats family friend Ruby Mahoney loads rock trucks. I'm sending you some pretty good pay. How's it looking over there? Ruby's high school buddy, Megan Gadette, feeds the trauma. It's looking pretty good, actually. With 200 yards of pay dirt an hour. We've been friends for quite a few years, so it's awesome with us working together now. And like, we started calling ourselves the dream team. Tony didn't know what he was going to get pairing us together. But he's going to get his money's worth, that's for sure. <laughs> you know, we are missing someone, though. I sure wish Monica was here with us. Me too, but at least she's having a little baby. While Monica takes maternity leave, Tony tasks son Kevin with keeping the dream team sluicing and his business afloat. With Monica away right now, I'm going even more directions than before. It's nuts these days. Well, that's not any good. So as you can see, we got a little hole here. That material should be going in the box. Anything that falls, we're not going to catch till we dig it all up in three years. The distributor, which feeds the sluice runs, has worn through. I uh, don't have a welder. And rather than wait for them to wrap up a truck, drive it over here, then burn a hole. So I'll plug it, make it work, make it work. Basically our motto. OK. Damn it, eh, Megs? Yeah, what the hell? I can't believe we're getting shut down. Well, good thing I was here, because nobody else would have noticed that. We'll do a quick fix for now, get it done proper in a bit. Oh, this is very complicated engineering we're doing right now. That's about as bush fix as you can get, I'd say. That's probably a bit extra, but that'll work. This should allow us to keep going for a little bit, and uh, if it doesn't hold, I'll put a bigger stick in there. It's gonna work. It's not proper or pretty, but you know what? It's gonna work. It's better than it was.
Do you have a hole in the distributor? Yep, had to jam a stick in there, so. Holy <laughs> it's a disaster in here. Now we're gonna work. We got leaks everywhere in the distributor, but if we keep around putting the stick in there or a piece of silicone, we're of course gonna be down all the time. Shut that down. This is I should be around sorting out the water license, but we got troubles down here, and uh, that has to get fixed. It's as simple as this. Or when the plan ain't running, we ain't getting no gold, means we ain't getting any money. It is time to get going. On Paradise Hill. We really need every spectacle that we can get. It's looking great on my end. Hopefully we get some big nuggets out of her. While Tony Beats continues to wait for permission to kickstart his mining operation on the Indian River, his dream team runs nugget cut pay through Mike's 40-foot trommel. There's like 30 plus of us working here right now. If we're not making gold and actually running it through the plant, then no one's gonna be able to get paid. And that would suck. Let's just try to move dirt as efficiently and quickly as you possibly can and keep the plants running and just try not to lose your mind because it is fun, but it's also insane. <laughs> The chute's pissing material. Hey, Tony, hey, Tony. The chute's leaking pretty bad. You gotta be kidding me. OK, I'll be on my way down there. The chute that carries material from the trommel down to the recently repaired distributor is losing gold from past repairs that have worn through. It's another case of quick fixes coming back to haunt the beats. Now, last year, we laid steel. Instead of welding those in, we did a quickie. We put in bolts. Now, of course, all that material flowing over the bolt heads, it's like a grinder. So those wear out and hold, 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 hold. That's the price you pay for not doing it right the first time. Shut it up. Oh, saves. We're more of a nightmare than a dream. You know, we're the nightmare squad. <laughs> Tony's only option is to drag six of his crew off other jobs so they can replace the chute's 40-foot steel base. Each hour the plant is shut down costs $3,600 in lost gold. Slide that tight that already so somebody can tack it so we don't have to hold it. No. Nope. You did the same on this side already? Perfect. This year we do it in the proper way. Once in a while you have to do some maintenance. It, it sucks, but it's, it's the way it is. OK, you can have a welder over there. Now they must weld the new base into position. OK, I want to see somebody in there welding, like now, so to speak. I need more welding cable there so I can get three welders on the go. But your decision to become a welder, don't blame it on me. This is the money maker, so uh, we have to start closing. Otherwise, no paycheck. It takes six hours to weld in the new chute base. It's finished. OK, fire up. Make some money. Everything's ready to go now, so let's turn it on, get some gold. Hey, Tony, hey, Tony, plant's fired up, it's running. I see no leaks, everything looks good. After a 10-hour shutdown, costing $36,000, the nightmare squad, Megan and Ruby, are back sluicing. To become the dream team once again, they must now run the plant non-stop for the rest of the week. Now my truck's dead on the pay pile. Now I won't restart. You want to come up next to me and nudge the back of the box? OK, I'll be over there. I'll help you out in a bit. I'm going to rock.
mock truck that just stalled out on the pay pile. So, down people and machines. And, uh, yeah, not, uh, not looking too good right now. Uh. I have to pull it off the pile until it's on flat ground, it's not going to start. If you tip this thing over, this is going on your record, not mine. We'll just see what happens. Nope, 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 nope. Wait a second. Just pushing it into the dirt more, isn't it? If you dig out where my front bumper's dug into the ground, that's what's keeping me from rolling off the pile. Yeah. Rick clears the ground in front of the bumper to try and free the 34-ton truck. All right, I'm just going to get up there and I'll give it a little tug. There's so much weight to be pulled that's, you know what I mean? Like, it's a 40-ton truck. I, I don't want to pull the front of that box off. When I got a mechanical issue that I can't figure out, I called my dad. <laughs> Good, how you doing, bud? I mean, we don't have a mechanic. Is there a way to manually override the parking brake? Oh, I don't feel good about that. It's dangerous. I'll do my best. All right, thanks, bud. Um, the only way to release the brake, by going in under there and trying to find the brake pot and release the pressure manually, is I'm going to have to be under the truck to do that. I wouldn't, it's not a good idea. I don't, it's just really the only way to release the brake, so not ideal. No. I mean, I think I can handle it. Be very careful. All right. Cruzy must manually disable the automatic braking system, but releasing the brake could roll the truck. It's just a potentially sketchy situation. The parking brake automatically locks up. So what we got to do Get this little tool out of here and release the pressure off parking brake manually. I'm not a mechanic. This is not a spot that I really belong in. All right. There it is. Watch yourself here. I don't know what's going to happen. Oh. Too carried away with it. I don't know if I got it released enough. I felt something. Fingers crossed. Cruzy seems to think he's got the parking brake released. So I've got to just get the thing to roll down the hill. It's starting to roll. Oh, here it comes. Oh, stand back. Ah, uh, there we go. You should be good. Oh, did I myself? No, but my ass swallowed the seat. <laughs> Need to get the damn thing flat and it started right up. Fire it up. Oh, yeah, there you go. That was a little tricky, but we figured it out. You know, 
no mechanic here, but we still, still manage to keep limping along, so we'll get back to load and pay. What's up, Jabronis? Hi. Hello. Oh, Skin Jabronis. What's going on, Popcat? What's going on, Pooh <laughs> Bear? You guys got cute little names for each other? I guess. Been an interesting week. Mm -hmm. It's tough to pivot from one cut to another, but you know, luckily, this ground, it hasn't had a whole lot of overburden. Mm -hmm. And Brennan, you were able to get in there and start stripping right away and keep us going. So Yeah, for sure. You know, I hate to keep pumping your tires. <laughs> It's nice having you here, man, because yeah. you know you know what I mean? Like, you've got you know a lot of the experience that I have from over at Parker's, and, and uh, you know, I can just set you on something, you can take off with it. Sure. And that uh, that really helps us out, so. Definitely, thanks. Yeah. You betcha, man, anything I can do. Yeah. Another week of limping along without a mechanic, but we keep <laughs> making it work. Yeah. I mean, yeah. at this point, we're, we're going with everything, calling up fathers and. <laughs> did you call your daddy to get your truck on oh. oh! Yes, I did. I'm not ashamed to admit it. I said you're a horrible driver. <laughs> yeah, he, wasn't, he wasn't impressed. He's like, I bet you look like a ding dong. Great age, Brony. <laughs> I better help you get it off there, and he did, so. Yeah. All right, yeah, so I do have some gold in here. You ready, buddy? Sure. All right. Rick needs over 100 ounces every week to stay on track for his season target of 2,000 ounces. 50, 60, 70, 75.92. Worth over $135,000. We went down a bit, but in a week where we had to pivot quick and we kept going, that ain't too bad. But now, you know, it's up to me. I got to build this team up a bit more. And we've got some serious ground to find this year. And it's going to be a lot tougher, but the payoff's going to be bigger. And that's what we need to get to our 2,000 ounce goal. So that's what we're here for. That's what we're here for. Yeah. Let's Lots keep her moving. Of it, too. Yeah. Carry it on, boys. Let's get out there. Yeah. So here we are, Paradise Hill, midway through the season. We've got a rack of high temperatures. Hot day. That is Tony Bees ripping the out of the frost. Gold mining heavyweight Tony Beats is fighting to get off the mat. I mean, we go through all this troubles and spend all of the money to get to these places. After gambling millions on his Indian River operation, he was denied a water license and had to give up on his goal of banking 9,000 ounces this year. But Tony is refusing to throw in the towel. We got some decent pay coming out of 80 bucks. Oh, he was leaving anything behind. Doesn't grow, so he might as well pick it up. His first move, opening the 80 pup cut at Paradise Hill, where he believes he could grind out over a thousand ounces in just four weeks. Mike's got to keep that plant fed, you know, 24 hours a day. That takes an awful lot of material. We bang seven, eight thousand yards a day through that thing. So that's pretty much a full-time job. Okay, the rest of the team, they better pull up the socks a little bit. Because otherwise, we just quite simply won't be able to find enough material to keep on going. It's very important that we get all of this out of here now while we still can. Hopefully, we can please the gold mining gods and we'll just be good to us. We can just get this material run through without any major problems. Operator Brandon Carr has just been promoted to feeding the plant. This is my second season up here in the Yukon. It is hard being across the country from your family, but you got to do what you got to do to get by. Tony is an awesome boss. Put it this way, if he likes you, you're treated awesome. 
long as you don't do no stupid mistakes. Tony, you got a copy, Tony? What do you got? Yeah, we got a pretty big hole in the punch plate of the Trommel. The Trommel sifts out rocks and sends gold-rich material into a distributor, where six chutes feed it evenly into the sluice runs. A hole in the punch plate is letting rocks fall into the chutes, which disrupt water flow and cause gold to flow out of the sluices. Just put every truck in the yard here. Yeah. <laughs> Use one for something. Can't do much about it. We have to shut it down. And as much as I don't want to lose anywhere up to eight shifts, there's nothing we can do about it. We have to fix it, because otherwise, we're going to end up having more downtime. Punch play finally up. Kevin is on the frozen pipe detail, so he has no time. So I think we're going to put some pressure on Brandon, and we'll see if Brandon can fix this up. Last season, it took four days to fix the punch plate. With no gold coming in, Tony wants Brandon to get it done in half that time. Rip the things out. Make sure it's the way you cut them that it's easy to put back. Yep. That's all we got to do. Nice helmet. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Have fun, gentlemen. So, this is the only plant we got running, so of course we're not sluicing, not making any money. And if we don't do maintenance, we'll be down all the time. Editor, all or what? First, Brandon will remove the worn out 2,300 pound punch plate and replace it with six eight foot sections. Then weld the steel sections together and fix them to the trommel. Can you whack it here from up there? Yep. That's a lot of time down, a lot of ground that we could be sluicing, but. Victory. We're going to try and get it done a little quicker than four days this year. Just one more lap. Uh, it's just jammed in there. Is this boom extended all the way? I think so. Can you grab it, see if you can get it by? Yeah. There. By the end of the day, Brandon has removed the damaged plate. Six hours into the fix, Tony's already down more than $10,000 in lost gold. The amount of money it costs when you're down, I mean, you're still spending and you're not making, so pretty much goes double up. It adds up quickly. Uh, just getting it ready and prepped so we can weld the new punch plate in. Tony loses $40,000 each day they're down and wants them running again by night shift. Why the f they use a pipe lighter? They're probably not smart enough, huh? Drive that thing. You mean the pipe lighter? Yeah, I mean the pipe lighter. Park it over here, and then every time you let them in from the top, in from the top, in from the top. Okay. So they around, around. Get it? That makes it so much simpler, gentlemen. 
I'll go grab the pipe layer. You want to pull this out? You can't put an old head on young shoulders. So first you let them figure it out, then you point out the up, and then you tell them how to do it right. So then the next time you won't have to do that. We got Big Red sitting on its wash plant pad there, just uh, putting everything together. What's your plan for water? It's a long ways from where Slucifer Like where Slucifer had pulled yeah, water from. Yeah, we don't have enough water line to get from that pond and that water source to where Big Red is now. Right. So my thought was, um, you know, recirculating in zones one and two. So we'll need to flood that area. So what's the best way to charge the ponds? Well, we've been fighting all season to keep zones one and two dry. Right. I mean, remember at the start of the year when the wall blew out there? What would it take to dig through that section? Or is it just gonna bleed in pretty quick on well, its own? Well, I mean, I mean, it's a Band-Aid with, it's barely hanging on over there. If we go over there and help it, I think it'd probably start coming in there pretty good. It sounds like that's gonna be the fastest. From my standpoint, you're under a lot of time pressure because Big Red um, has an appointment with Mud Mountain yeah. <laughs> that is gonna come up in a hurry. And you need to try to pound out 1,500 ounces down there at the airstrip and then get that plant moved. Okay. Mitch is gambling on water from Slucifer's old pond, having leached through the berm. He'll dig down into the patched up berm in the hopes of tapping into the groundwater and using it to flood the mined out cut, providing a pond to feed Big Red. Are you looking over there, Tyson? You seen any water yet? Nothing pouring in yet. What do you think? We're going to find any water or is it uh, all dried up here? I know we're a lot later in the season. We've had a lot of warm days and a lot of sunshine in here. It looks pretty bone dry to me, Mitch. Check that out. Got some snow in there. Well, I've got a little flow here now. I've hit water table, Mitch. That's a start, but it'll be two weeks before we're sluicing if that's all we get. Tyson's found water, but it's nowhere near enough to flood the entire cut and supply the 1,500 gallons a minute that Big Red needs. We have a lot of water stored upstream from us. In theory, you would think it would push through, but it all depends on how many layers of ice is in the way. We could need to go five feet more, or 50 feet more, or 100 feet more, who knows, to get it to bleed in the timeline we're given. I am a little bit concerned right now on that this might not work. You know, we really want to turn on Big Red as fast as possible, so we need some more water here fast. You know, right now, this has to work. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Here she flows. That's more like it. That's what we're looking for. Yeah. Come on, baby. Yeah, we got water. So we've got our pond filled up. Our water pump's pumping water. The generator's warming up here. We're going to turn on the breaker and get some belts spinning. All right, it's going to be showtime here in a sec. There we go. We got power. All the belts are spinning. Big Red is coming to life. First scoop of Big Red this year. Let's do this. Let's get that gold. Here we go. That's what we've been waiting for. Here comes the dirt. 
Finally, nine weeks into his season, Parker has Big Red and Slucifer running. Here we are. Come on, Jarvis. Home sweet home. Hey, Shane, everything's looking really good up here at the shaker deck, so just keep the dirt coming. Awesome, buddy. I'll keep feeding the beast. I can smell the gold in this stuff. Hey, you old Hey, you old timer. How are you, Chris? At Scribner yeah. Creek, Ken Tatlow arrives to weigh the first gold from the ground he leases to Parker. So how you been? Good, good. Slucifer plant boss Tyson Lee. Hey, Tyson. Hey, T-Bird, how you doing, buddy? Pretty good, you doing it? Good, good. And foreman Mitch Blaschke. What's happening? Hey, Mitch. Hey, How's Mitchell. It going? Are here for the first double gold way of the season. I think you guys did a great job setting up Big Red. I mean, you know, Mitch, you and Brennan always did it, and you guys and those escalators worked as one unit. It was just amazing. But Tyson, you stepped right up. I mean, it's Let's great. It. Well, this is our first cleanup on your ground, Ken, so. Well, that'll be exciting. Yeah. Yeah, haven't seen any for a while. Yeah. <laughs> About 40 years. Parker started the week 900 ounces down on this time last year. This is Lucifer. To match last season, both plants need to average 235 ounces. So if you want to rattle off some numbers, I'll pour it out. We have 30, 40, 50, so slow down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 90, 100, 110, 130, 150, 180, 206. 208.75. Not bad, old dog. Is that for 40 hours? No. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of hours to make that happen. Know, you're you're missing a zero. Yeah, I know. Probably, yeah. <laughs> Mitch, on this third cut, we're hoping to get, what, 1,500 ounces out of the thing? We need 1,500 to match what Slucifer did. Here we Let's go. See what we got. 20, 40, 50, 80, 100. Now, 20, to find out if Big Red can match Slucifer. 180, 200, 220, 240. Keep her going. Keep 250. Going right there. That's all I got. 263.8. Here, all right, let's go ahead. <laughs> Worth nearly $475,000, Big Red has got Parker back up to speed. Well, it's nice to see that Big Red remembers its job there.